lives. Everybody act right. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, oh my boy, it still isn't done yet, but that's okay. So let me kind of introduce to you where we're at, okay? Last week we talked about the timeline of the abomination of desolation, right? All the way through. Who saw the picture? New folks excluded. Who saw the picture on the message page? Good, oh yeah. Serious? So listen to me, if you can, take a picture of that timeline and keep it, because I'm not redrawing it, at least right now. <laughs> I'm going to actually turn all of these into formats and paperwork so that you guys can use them to teach yourselves, okay? Because that's how you make disciples. I teach you and then you teach others. It's kind of cool that way, but that's the way Jesus set it up, so let's just do this thing. Now, we talked about, so we're, we're talking about the end times. This is what I need you to understand. We are, I, didn't, I don't know where it was either, babe. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I'll just do it in the last one. So, come on, brother. I love you. Um, I'm going to move these. Charlie said, right, right here. Yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, I looked everywhere. I don't know how big it was going to be. Um, is that another for you? Absolutely. 
Will he use signs, miracles, wonders? Absolutely. Jesus said it in John 14. It is come to life for us too. Now watch. Now that we are at this end time point, now that you have this message, what do you need to do with it? You need to share it. But what is the message? What is the whole gospel? It is the gospel of grace. It's how an unbeliever becomes a believer. It's also your identity in Christ. If you don't know your identity in Christ, you are literally walking around with blinders on because you don't see the full picture. But along with your identity in Christ, you have to understand the power of Holy Spirit in you, through you, on your life, over your life, with you. Amen. That's part number three. Part number four, the truth of the kingdom. The truth that at a day in the future, the near future, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15 will come to life for you. You will stand before the Lord and He will judge your works. He is not judging your salvation. I say this over and over because it's important. Verse 11 says, There is no foundation that is laid other than Jesus Christ. So if Jesus Christ is my foundation and now He's calling me to build on top of it, but now He's going to judge my works, does that really say that, wait a minute, the only way that I can get into heaven is to show Him how good I worked no. for Him? Yeah. Yeah. See, it's like George and I were talking about on Saturday morning, folks. Salvation is by grace through faith. God did something you couldn't do to save your life, to Amen. get you into relationship Amen. with Him. But now that you're in relationship with Him and He wants you to do work, we get all gung-ho and take off and say, well, I'm going to go work for God. And God's going, where are you going? Come on back. This God wants to live with you. Amen. It's what he wanted in the garden, and he's got it now. Yes. If you will accept it, if you will receive that truth. Yes. All right. So now what God wants you to do is he needs you to take this message and to take it out. What if I don't understand the message? That's why you're here. Amen. Okay. Let's dispel a rumor. The rumor is church is a place that you come for entertainment. Did I say a wrong word or something? <laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> I, I, well, this is just kind of the hang on to. It's kind of a... <laughs> what did they call this when I was a kid? I had a... a Thank you! She gets me! You had one, didn't you? <laughs> See? Security blanket people stick together. Okay, hold on. Ian, let us put down his security blanket. For Jesus. Amen. Well, every time. Oh, gosh. Every time. I got this good. You can go all the way back if you want to. Ooh! That would be good. Are you on me? I just need to make sure that... Alright, so here we go. Matthew chapter 15. So what I want to do is I want to show you the timeline that Jesus gives you in the Bible from Matthew chapter 13 to show you where we're at in Scripture. Okay? You already know we're close. Amen? Amen. Everybody gets that point. I don't have to belabor that anymore, right? I'm actually going to back up a little bit because I might come out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool, dude. All right. So Matthew chapter 13, we're going to start with verse 24. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. He presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be comparable to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed tares also among the wheat and went away. But when the wheat sprang up, remember this is a parable, everything's going to represent something else, and bore grain, then the tares became evident also. And the slaves of the landowner came, landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, Do you want us then to go and to gather them up? 
But he said, no. Lest while you are gathering up the tares, you may root up the wheat with them. That's important. We'll come back to that. Now watch. Verse 30. Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, what do we do? I will say to the reapers, first, gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up. Notice where. But wait, there's more. But gather the wheat into whose barn? Now watch, we'll talk, Jesus is talking in a parable. Just like he did in Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the sower. I pray that you saw that passage, that teaching, because it literally leads into this. The, the good soul Christian in the parable in Matthew is who you are. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Let me go out and say that one more time because I don't think they heard me. Lord, how many days they need to know their authority in Christ. Listen. Where we're at right now is who you are. You are a good soil Christian. How do I know that? Because you're here. Amen. Amen. If you weren't a good soil Christian, you wouldn't be here. You would have the worries of the world keep you from what the Father wants to share with you today. Huh. Now watch. So now, this is really cool. So it's a parable. So that means that one thing represents something else. And I just wish... One time, just one time in Scripture, I just wish that Jesus would just say, look, this is what the parable means. He actually does. So come on. Over to verse number 37. And let me show you the interpretation of the parable from Jesus' own mouth. Amen. So if Jesus says it, it's pretty important, eh? Okay? Hey. Amen. Okay? Here we go. Here's the interpretation. Number one, verse 37, the answer is said to the one, no, where am I? 37. 37. The one who sows the good seed is a son of man. Ding, ding, ding. Jesus. Okay? Now watch this. I need you to understand something. Who is doing the sowing and the sower in the parable of the sower in Matthew chapter 13 in the beginning? <laughs> who sowed the seed? What was the seed that he sowed? The the seed. What was the name of the seed that, that, that Jesus sowed in Matthew chapter 13? Remember the seeds. There's three different seeds. There's the, the Word of God, the Word, and the, the Word of the Kingdom. Okay? So that shows you that Luke has a specific point to his parable. Mark has a specific point to his, and so does Matthew. They are not the same. Don't look at those parables and say, oh, they're just the same. They use the word wrong. Because then what you're saying is, oh, they're the same parable, but Holy Spirit just used the word wrong? No. no. Every single word that is in the word of God has been placed there specifically by God for you to see and to dig into. Amen. Everything is a jewel in your life. So now, the man represents Jesus, verse 38. Let's keep going. The field is the world. Okay? And the good seed represents the sons of the kingdom. Let me go back. And the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. He's literally like, I should have flipped this. Verse 39. Who is the enemy? You probably only figured this one out on your own. The enemy is... Devil. Okay? Right. So verse 39, the devil. The harvest. Oh, the reapers. We've got to talk about the reapers first. The reapers are the angels. What's the harvest? Why are we laughing? He's just, no, uh-uh, because I know you just... I love you. He's laughing at you. We still love you. Okay? The harvest is the end of the age. Now watch this. The harvest is the beginning of the day of the Lord. That's all we're going to talk about right now. Craig smile when I know it is. Because watch this. The harvest is the end of the age. 
Jesus said so. Watch this. Does Jesus say that it's the rapture? No. no. Uh oh. <laughs> How many times was Harpazo used last week? We saw twice. He's talking about the coming of the Lord. But wait a minute. The stuff that he was talking about, I'm literally seeing on my TV and outside of my window. And he told me when that happens, and I see this abomination of desolation, what happens if I see the abomination of desolation and I'm here? Run like you've never run before. Leave everything behind and hide yourself. Because it's about to get nasty. Gee, it sounds like Jesus just warned his people what's about to happen and the time frame that it's about to happen. You're absolutely right. So now watch. We must never read into Scripture something that is not there. Okay? Now, what I want you to do, let's go look at verse 24. And I want you to understand something. Because you saw the parable of the seed in Matthew 13, right? The seed was the word of the kingdom. But here the seed is different. Okay? When the sower throws, puts seed into the field, he's throwing a seed into the world. Whereas before, the parable of the sower, the parable, the seed there was doctrine, meaning the word of God for how you are to live your life. And it's non-negotiable. That makes it really easy to follow, right? Yeah. <laughs> the next one, oh here, here the seed is believers. Okay? It's believers. The seed was doctrine, but now here the seed is believers. Now watch what happens. Jesus sows the seed. Okay? You get the picture? Right. And now when the seed goes into the ground, because you were good soil, you grow up, and now you have this maturity. Not that you're like, I'm better than everybody else. You're just, oh my gosh, look what God has done. Look what God has shown me. And there's more. Yes, there is. Hey, you know what the problem with corn? They don't get enough water. The top of them never grows properly. You have to have enough water. Okay, so now we come to this point. Now watch. The title, the, the, the seed, okay, represents all of believers during the church age. So now watch Jesus. Watch. Because the dude left. Watch. Verse 24. The kingdom of heaven may be carried parable to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But when, the men, but when men were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed tares. Also among the wheat and went away. Now watch. Where is the dude who sowed the seed? But he's not working in the field. The man who sowed the seeds, right? The man who sowed that seed, that good seed, and it fell into the good ground. Now, where is he? What he does is he sends the seed. He stays in proximity to it. But then there comes a time where he says, I have to examine what I've put out. See, I need you to understand something. Yes. When God creates something, it's not like we get a creative spurt, like they told me that I had when I was two. That was my growth spurt. Okay? It came out this size. No idea. So, we get a growth spurt, and then we like kind of like level off. Right? And then, and then there's another upward rise, because another like trial or temptation comes. Jesus throws the stone in there, so now you got to hop up over it. And then, you know, it's like a mountain climb. But what if that's not true? What if I'm in Christ? What if I'm seated at the right hand of God? Amen. What if by His victory, yes. I'm victorious? Amen. What if my life is not one of these? It's one of these. Amen. Yes! But my mind says, but God's going, oh, no, 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 no. Friend, this is who you are. This is why you're here. Amen. You are here to learn. You are here to grow. You are here to just be increased encouraged, edified, empowered. Listen. Yes. The Lord's about to do some crazy stuff around here. Yes. We're fixing to have two services in a weekend. <laughs> crazy stuff. Yeah. Right? Now, so look at this time frame. Whew. 
Now let's go to verse 25. Because now I want to come back and I want to unpack each verse. So now you see that what Jesus is doing. Now watch this. This timeline that he's going to give you has literally ended until when? The end of the age when he comes again, right? Yes. Hey, has he talked about what's going to happen when he's come again? Not to this point, not really. A little bit. Drop the nugget. If you catch it, you're awesome. But mostly in Revelation, you're going to see the man coming in the Son of Glory. When you see it in Matthew, you're going to see the doom. And I'm just going to use that word. That falls upon the earth when the Son of Man has to come and make things right. Because he can't leave it in this state. Sin breeds death. It is so in the world. It is so in your body. Sin breeds death. But Jesus brings life. Yes. See, that's why you don't have to struggle to be on his level. Because you're already with him on that level. Yes. Understand what the word of God is telling you. But now watch this. It is absolutely... Without a shadow of a doubt, no accident that you are sitting here learning this. Because God is literally calling you out. I had this conversation. Why, Dad? Where are you? Wednesday. The lady's testimony for, can I discuss what she, okay, so Wednesday at Celebrate Recovery, this lady gave a testimony and she gave this challenge. And I'm like, What's the challenge? Set a timer for 11 minutes. Go in your place. Get along with God. Write a, write, a, write a question, either on a board or on a piece of paper, and wait for 11 minutes to give him an answer, for him to give you an answer. And the lady said, It'll, it may be the most excruciating time of your life, or it may be one of the most fruitful times of your life. So me, Dad, on my board, in my... In my or my closet, whatever, dad, dot, dot, dot. We're family, right? Yes. So I can share my questions in my heart with you. Yes. Why are we not growing in number? Question. Sat there quietly. I don't know how long, but then he said to me, because I haven't been able to get you to fully understand the love that I have for my people yet. Did you catch the last word? That's still working. Who am I to say, Dad, I'm not far enough along yet. I'm supposed to be there. He's going to say, I know. But you're not. No. You're right where you are. are. So, oh, see. Because although we love to have each other, it's not. See, the chaos, the chaos doesn't determine your life. Your busy schedule doesn't determine your life. Your perspective of how you view what God is allowing into your life does. Amen. See the difference? Totally different. All right? I am so just like, you guys are going to just have to help me today. Somebody's going to have to keep me on, on focus. What is his name? See? I'm going to do it again. Jeff Allen. See? I'm going to do it again. Focus. Great community. Okay. Verse 25. Christian community. But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and allowed tears. So now, Jesus come. He sows people into the word into the world. They have this message to share. This message that they share bears fruit because that's what wheat does. It bears fruit. And as it continues to grow, something happens. Men fall asleep. So there will be a time in history from after Jesus, but before right now, when all of a sudden men are just going to say, Bible on fire, Holy Spirit, yes sir. Bam. Did that ever happen in history? Yes. Yeah. It did. Weeds were sown. Terror is a weed. Okay? So while men slept, now what is he talking about? Everybody literally fell asleep? No. What do you think they fell asleep to? I'll give you a hint. The word. The word, the word of God. Why? Because an organization came in and said, this is the holy word of God. I say, with my buddies, what this Bible says. May I see that? I, I, no. You can't understand this. The glory of God would make your head explode. <laughs> That's why I gotta have a pointed hat to have something to kind of. See, I thought that would go over better. 
I was raised Catholic, and I love them to death, so there ain't more with that. Right? But what do we have? We have, we have this point where men were sleeping. Men fell asleep because the Roman Catholic Church, I'll just call it out, the organization, because we're going to talk about them in this timeline. They step in, they do something to the Word of God, and then men fall asleep. And then that carries through, but while men are asleep, meaning they don't understand the Word of God anymore, because they don't search out the words. They don't come together in their houses anymore and say, hey, I see this word, what does this mean? I don't know, let's break out the Hebrew. Let's bust it out. Let's have a Bible study. They stop doing that stuff, like today. And what happened? They fell asleep. Please see the connection between the parable of the ten virgins and what we're studying right now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All of them began to get slumbers. Some of them fell asleep. He's talking about you. You have to stay awake. Amen. We have no time left to play games and get involved in. He likes me. He doesn't like me. He said something bad about me. What am I going to do? Your identity is in who he says you are. Yes. And if he says you are a son or a daughter of God, then that's who you are. Yes. If he sees you as a king or a queen in his kingdom, that's who you are. Amen. Remember, this is his standard. We're the ones that say, nope. It's what happened to Israel in the wilderness. That's yeah. why they didn't get in, because God said, I got a place. They said, yep, he gave us a place. Come on in. Not doing it. Unbelief. They were already saved, yeah. but they did not believe enough to receive God's promise. Right. Yeah. Amen. We have to be awake yes. so that we can receive God's promise. What did I put this morning? Receiving is passive. Believing is active. active. You come in here to receive the word of God, right? But then what do you do with it? I'll just put that on the shelf right there. No, you are to take the truth of the word of God and apply it to your life. Let it change you. Don't go to a bookstore. This is how self-help. If I look in the mirror and I say you are beautiful 15 times or something like that, that has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with you understanding who you are. But not once this. Please, guess this. what he's called you out to do. You are not here just to get, uh -huh, he really sweat a lot today. Listen, you are here to get built up and to get out there and to tell yes, people yes, what yes, the word God yes. is saying now. Because we have no more time. Verse 25. As the weed grows, men sleep. Right? Now watch this. Satan is the imitator. When the tear and the wheat grow, and they'll say so in the parable, when they grow together, they look exactly alike. I love how God does this stuff. How can you tell whether it's a tail, tear or whether it's a wheat? When they're fully grown. That brings us to verse 26. But when the wheat sprang up, okay, now watch. In history, where are my history buffs? I know you're out there. You don't have to raise your hand because we don't do that kind of thing. So listen, there was a time, because we're history buffs, man, we're humble. Now watch. Men fall asleep to the Word of God. They don't know. And all of a sudden, the wheat springs up. Question number one, who is the wheat? Believers. Believers. Jesus already said so. Now watch. All throughout Scripture, wheat represents a believer. Because God speaks to us in patterns. Why would he do that? Because he knows we're bored when we read too much. <laughs> That's why he does multi-sensory stuff. That's why when Jesus said, who do you say that I am? It was literally a multi-sensory lesson because if you study where Jesus is, when he asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And Jesus replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But what you have to understand is he was in Caesarea Philippi. And in Caesarea Philippi, all behind him was a wall full of idols. And Jesus stands before the idols and in a nice, powerfully quaint way says, 
you see it that way. One of these people that you need to get your money? Because they can. One of these gods that says you have enough time in your day? We even sacrifice them to the firstborn. Sometimes we do. If we're honest. We have to balance life with Christ. Watch this. Not for him. Not so that he'll be pleased when he looks at my... My schedule this morning. I'm not My schedule now. You and I need to connect. But when God looks at my schedule and says, it's not the same as Rob's schedule. You have to change that thing. It's got to be just like Rob's. Because Rob is just like you. I mean, <laughs> but you have an individual life and an individual walk with Amen. God. Amen. Okay? So now watch. Verse 26. This thing happens. What happened in history? When all of a sudden, the word of God just appeared out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, men said, whoa, this is the truth of the word of God. It happened. During the time of the Reformation in 1517 A.D. Please take note of that number because it's extremely important. And you're going to see how God is smarter than the devil <gasps> always. 1517. This dude by the name of Martin Luther who was a Catholic priest who had to climb up steps on his knees and when he got there his knees were bloody. If they weren't, he didn't do it right. Sound workish to you? So then when you get to the top, you can meet with the Lord. Jesus is at each step going, dude, where are you going? Hey, buddy. I'm right. I mean, yeah, I'm up there too, but I'm literally right here with you. In the valley. See? Let that, no, that's a prophetic word. Let that be a reminder for some of you. When you are in the valley and love's going to, Jesus is right there with you. Amen. <laughs> that's right. I may not, but he's saying, oh. All right, now. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, he is here. But when we go here, he comes down with us. back up. Y'all think I preach long? Wait till Saturday. I've seen Craig preach. It's like six hours. No bathroom breaks either. <laughs> He's rough. Oh, I'm gonna go back and find him rough. All right. Now let's look at verses 27 through 29. Jesus is continuing to show us. And the slaves of the land overcame and said to him, Sir, do you not sow good seed in your, in your field? Did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, his slaves, that's you, because we are bond servants, who loss of Jesus, all of us, we are willingly in service to him. Yes. Are you? Yes. yes. That's, a, that's a your heart answer in the question. All right? Verse 28, and he said to them, an enemy has done this. And the slave said, do you want us to then go up and gather them up? And he said, no. Lest while you are gathering up the tares, you may uproot up the wheat with them. I need you to understand something. The slaves of the landowner don't have enough spiritual knowledge to know the difference between a tear and a wheat. I need to let that sit for a second because you have to understand the ramifications of what Jesus is telling you. You are not a fruit inspector. You will tell them by their fruit. You can tell them by their fruit. You can tell them by their fruit. What? What can you tell by their fruit? They got bad fruit. Uh-huh. You ever produce bad fruit? Yeah. Yeah. Judge not lest you be judged. Amen. You know why he says that? Lord just gave this to me this morning. Are you kidding me? Judge not, lest you be judged. Why is he saying? So don't judge Peter Ann, because when you get to the judgment seat, God's going to go, I saw how you treated Peter Ann. I'm going to treat you the same way that you treated No, no, no. You know what he's saying? Don't judge Peter Ann, because when you judge Peter Ann, you're literally judging yourself. That's right. Be nice, Peter Ann. Yes. You're literally looking in the mirror going, oh, how could you be like that? Because that's 
We're black. Uh, I guess we're in the same boat. We are. Together. Yeah, we are. But don't I have a higher station because I'm the pastor? No. Uh -uh. If anything, I'll be in the bottom of the boat. Rowing hard. Rowing hard. Amen. All right, now. So, understand the Lord's warning to us here. You are not to be a, a heresy hunter. Why? Because you can do damage to the wheat. Amen. That's what Jesus is saying. Please don't get out your heresy hunter outfit because that's not your job. Amen. Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. What is your part? To be passive and wait. Right. If he wants you to speak, he'll tell you. Believe me. And when he wants you to shut up, do this. Now, verse 30. Come on. Allow them both to gather until the harvest and in the time of the harvest. I will say to the reapers, gather up. First, gather up the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them up. But gather the wheat into my barn. All right, a little bit of agricultural knowledge needed. Where's my agriculture books? Yes! There's always one, but he's a pastor, so there goes All right, now, remember that the Lord is giving us a historical overview here. Please keep that in the context of what you're seeing here. The first four parables that we're going to see, parable of the sower, parable of the wheat and tares, parable of the mustard seed, parable of the leaven, they are where they are for a specific reason. Why would it be that Jesus takes time to talk about two other parables, three other parables, or two other parables, before he describes what the parable of the wheat and the tares is all about. Now watch! If the word of God has been placed exactly the way it has been by God, and has it? Yeah. Amen. So God purposely said in verse 37, we're going to explain the parable that I gave before. Why? Because what do you see in this parable of the wheat and the tares? You see an overview of where you sit right now to the very end of the age when the day of the Lord starts. Yes. He's literally giving you an overview of what's going to happen. Yes. Now he's going to teach you in Revelation form, in Daniel form, in Galatian form, in Romans form. You're going to go through it. And now he's going to say, now that you've got that concept, let me go back. Because now there's stuff I've got to fill in. Mm. Wow, God, you are amazing. Really? There's more. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine what I am seeing. But wait. There's more. Do you ever think there's an end to God's wisdom? No. You're never going to search him out, but I sure am going to have fun trying. Because yes. I'm going to mess with him as much as he's been messing with me. You ever see what I'm saying? Okay. I know good luck with him. Right? Y'all know God. Listen, y'all know God is a prankster. He's also just. Oh, I can prove it to you. Yeah, but he's. I can prove it to you that God is a prankster. Behold, the lion, the king of the jungle. He prances around. Behold, the eagle, the, the fiercest. Bird and it's behold the bear and its mighty claws. Behold the duck billed platypus. <laughs> but now watch this. Apparently, the duck billed platypus is very venomous. Yes. yes. Or dangerous, right? Yeah. See, so go. So you look at the duck billed platypus yeah. and you're like, ah, ha, 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 ha. oh. <laughs> and then you're like, that would teach you. Probably come before a fall. Don't what? See? Don't be judging something by the way. Listen. Lesson for today, don't laugh at a duck-billed platypus. Remember that when we go to the zoo. <laughs> I'm signing the waiver. <laughs> All right, now. now, the harvest, now watch this, I want you to see. So we saw the Reformation. This is in your notes, and I want you to see this, okay? So you can study that on your own, but I want you to understand what we're seeing here, okay? The harvest represents the rapture of the body of Christ. Stop for a second. Okay. Lose this. Because it was really the only one that I could come up with. Lose this word. You know what? Do me a favor. Cross that out and say the gathering of. Amen. Because it's not a rapture passage. And I'm mistaken by putting that word up there. 
to remove that. The harvest represents the gathering up of the body of Christ. When? At the end of the age. When the day of the Lord starts. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. When the day of the Lord starts. Right? When is it? Now, remember what you saw. If the day of the Lord starts, but before the day of the Lord, according to Jesus' own words, we've got some things that we've got to see. Some things have got, now you know exactly the picture that Jesus is giving you. You're literally in the ballgame right now. He's literally giving you everything you need. Now watch. There's two important truths to see here. One about the wheat, one about the tares. Love this. Right? This is all in a wonderful pattern of judgment. Number one, the wheat, believers, the wheat is gathered and placed into the barn. Okay, everybody see that verse 30? A lot of mother girl. First, gather up the tares and bind them in the barn. We'll talk about them in the sin and burn them up. But gather the wheat into my barn. So now watch. When harvest comes in, you take the wheat, you bundle it up, and then you stand there and you steer it for about four months and say how awesome God is. No, you take it and then you bring it to a place called the threshing floor. Okay? The threshing floor is when you take the wheat, you put a pitchfork in there and you just start to move. Get all that corn off of there, that hard on your shell. What, the man, what he does is he throws it up in the air. The chaff, that hard outer shell, just flies away. And the fruit falls down. It's literally a picture of a person in the judgment seat of Christ. You will literally be judged for your wheat. Now watch this. Holy crap, how do I make wheat? The same way you make grapes. Just hang out with the vine. Let him do the work. But I want to work. I know, and that's why you won't. <laughs> you don't work for God because you want to work. Get out of his way. How do I do that? That's where it starts. Stop with the mouth. Change your perspective. Let God show you. Now, I keep getting up. So I said I keep getting off track, and God says, whose time is this? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Long time ago. Excuse me. Yes, sir. The word you're using is T A R E S. Yes. Tares. Oh, yes. T A R E S. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, this version of the Bible says weeds. Weeds. It never wants to use that word. That's the same thing. Weeds, weeds, and tares. Weeds and tares. So, yeah. back, back in those times, it was called a tear. Okay? okay? But it's the same. The, the concept of the Greek word is. A, a growth that it's when it grows water. it looks just like wheat but when it comes to full fruition it actually has poison in it and it's brought about by the wind and the changes and all the rain and everything and it literally all berries and blueberries it just can mess with everything and if you try to take one up you're going to take the rest of the wheat with it so. you know there's some wheat biggest of fungus uh, and it creates grains that they call ergots. The fungus produces ergotine. Ergotine is lysergic acid diethylamine 25. He's a scientist. Which Whoa. is which is LSD. Wow. Back in the 60s. Stop yourself. Back in the 60s, there, there was a problem in Denmark where all these. Farmers were chasing each other around with pictures and stuff. Me? That's because they were all having cooks on this natural LSD. <laughs> That's I'm not real. right. This <laughs> man confirms everything about it. Who shall it be, right? Okay. I think the fungus and LSD are going to burn off. <laughs> all right. So now, what we have here. If I can do this. Everybody sleep on <laughs> We're here. You're here. Okay. Okay. 
Thumbs up if you can see it. Thumbs up. Anybody cannot see? You guys cannot see? I can see now. Uh, <laughs> I did a good thing. Pull it the other end. Pull it forward. How far? Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, do not judge. That's like the focus. What he's trying to tell you is, while you're out there in the world, taking the whole gospel, because you're in it now. Yeah. yeah. Woo I hate, listen, you're not going to go to the judgment seat of Jesus and say, look, I plugged you into a place where I was giving you my word so that you could see your inheritance, your reward, so that you could tell others. Yeah, but that dude was weird. <laughs> he sweat entirely too much. 
You expect me to go hang out with him? It's not about me, it's about the word. Amen. Amen. My delivery offends you, I'm sorry. Don't be. But then I'm not sorry. Thank you very much, Father, for making me an excuse. Me. But now watch. Now you have a time frame. So now, where last week we started here, this week we're strike we're starting exactly where you are right now. Now, in the next three parables, so this is your reading for this week. I want you to study the parable of the leaven, and I want you to study the parable of the mustard seed. Study, read, whatever you want to do, just like you did last week with Matthew chapter 13 with this. But I want you to read the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the leaven. Okay? So Jesus, what he's done here is he said, okay, in parable form, I came and I spread all of you into the world to bring the gospel. Yes. Okay? So that you would know the whole counsel of God and that you would share that counsel of God with others. Encouragingly. Yes. Because now we have life. We should want everybody else to have this life, right? Yes. And if they aren't, oh gosh, we need to pray. But now we come to this, and here we go. What does God do? He lays it right up in front of us. I want to do this with you. I want to do this thing with you. And now he says, what I need you to see is in the parable of the mustard seed, in the parable of the leaven, you're going to see a connection from Jesus' own words to the tares. But not the tares, where the tares came from. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a bomb on you. For those of you who don't know, yes. the parable of the leaven and the parable of the mustard seed have nothing to do with anything that's good then. Drop the mic. We're going to talk about it next week. And if you're looking at me going, <laughs> you are an idiot. <laughs> then I challenge you to study the Word of God Ooh. and to show me where He's taught me wrong. I don't say that as like an affront or anything, but if you find something in the Word of God and you don't come to me, who's responsible? Well, me, because I didn't matter for it. No. Who, who got the truth? She gets the truth. What is she supposed to do with it? Hang on to it. Let's put it up there on the shelf with everything else. No, share it. Because then what, what does God do? He gives her the same and then he gives her more. Because that's how God is. But you have to have an open heart. It's just like my brother says, just open your heart and just allow him. Okay? So now, now that we are two weeks into this, different, eh? Hey, hey. The same powerful spirit, completely different atmosphere. It's very tangible in you, sisters. Very, 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 the Holy Spirit is like, I mean, really. I mean, we just, we praise it. We think, are we turning it over? What are we doing? You have two fillings, one? Yeah. Where are they? Focus. Okay. Oh, those are in my long notes. Speaking of which, Reformation. What passage is that? Matthew 13, right? Yes. So when I printed the notes, it kind of... So I tried to print the notes from the house, right? And then I made changes, because the printer's here, because our printer got struck by lightning, right? But it, like, connects. So I'm like, cool, it'll print. So I printed it, but then the Lord said, no, 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 wait, there's some changes I want to make, like this. Gather and gather, gather up and gather, because they're two different words that are very important for you to see. Right? Now you got to get the story. But when I, when I came over to get it, it was, it was offline. So I did the turn off thing and the turn back on, and then my nose printed. I'm like, yay! But I forgot that I didn't take the changes. So the changes are in there. So now this is what we're going to do. We're going to do our fly Bible study. Hey. What, verse 30? Yes. Okay, allow both to grow together in the harvest. And then when the time comes, the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up. All right, the word gather up. 
Bible drill. The word gather up in Greek. Find it for me. First person gets a start. Find it where? However you find your, your verses. You want to do it in a linear? Or? They're like, you guys are crazy. What is it? First, it's Matthew. If you can't have fun while learning, why learn? Yes, ma'am. You got it? Go. What does gathered up mean? Um, it's school leg oak. And its original sense it is in its original sense to collect, to gather, together, up. Okay? So the word in Greek literally means to pick. It literally means to pick. He's going to gather them up, pick, like a weed. Pick. And then he's the only one. Gather up. I didn't put the word in there, Holy Spirit did. Now there's another word in there that says gather. Who's got it? She knows I'm looking right at this. I don't have it. Okay, she's not. Okay. Greek word for gather, not gathered up, gather later on in the passage. Teacher's pet. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Soon ag o, to lead together, collect or convene. Especially to entertain hospitably, company, assemble selves together, bestow, come together, gather selves together, up together, lead unto, resort, taking. Okay, so the Greek word means this, here's your filling. To gather together for the sake of fellowship. Fellowship. Imagine that. And watch. The terrors are plucked up, bound up left in the field to be judged, but the wheat are gathered together. Synagogu. You know what word we get from that? Synagogue. That's where the Jews came together to do what? Fellowship. And to study the word of God. That's what synagogue means. To come together to worship God. You guys have synagogue? I guess. We're coming in worship God. All right, so those are those two, okay? So see the difference. So now, your homework is what? To, to read what? Okay. All right, I'm going to turn it over to the worship team. Thank <laughs> you. 